Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Welcome back everyone. We just explored basic functions and we're going to continue on by taking a close look at arguably Google Sheets most powerful, versatile, useful function. It goes by the name Query. This function allows you to do so many things and most people love it because it can do the job of many other functions. Some even argue that it can replicate most of the functions of pivot tables. There's so much we could cover with Query, so we're just going to cover the basics to get you started and apply it here in our recipe book. So let's get started. All right, now before we get started, let's go over a little pro tip here. We're going to name our ranges. It will save you so much time when you start working with functions if you name your different sets of data that you know you'll be analyzing because then you don't have to go and select the data. You can just simply type out the name in the function. So to do that, I'm going to highlight these columns that contain my recipe book. I'm selecting the entire column because I may add more recipes. I could also just select the specific data, but for what I'm doing, I want the whole column. Okay, now I can either right click and then go to more actions and then define named range, or I can click data at the top and go to named ranges. Either way, this sidebar window opens on the right. I see the range that is selected and I can give it a name. In this case, I'm just going to write recipes. So don't use any spaces if you do use two words. It needs to be all together as one. Click done and repeat this process as needed for additional ranges. You can also manage your named ranges here at any time. So awesome. Now we are ready to get started. Let's talk about the query function syntax. We have three arguments the data, the query, but with quotations around it, and then the number to say how many rows do we have with headings. Some of the things you can ask a query to do is to select, where, group by, order by, limit, or label. What that means is I can say, hey, look at this entire range, this entire set of data, and select these three columns for me and only these three columns or I can add to that and say hey select those columns if column A equals this condition that I give you so that's what we're going to do we're gonna say hey give me these columns if the course is entree in column F let's do that now with a query, it's going to basically pull a new set of data, a smaller version of what you already have. That is unless you're pulling multiple small sets together with a query, which is absolutely possible. But either way, it's a data set, so you're probably going to want that on its own tab. Don't worry, our next module is all about how to add these extra sheets, so for now, Let's just use the one that we have down here at the bottom that says query. That's the one that we're going to use. We're going to start by typing equals query and then open parentheses. Now our first step is to tell what range it is searching. If I didn't name it, I would have to click on this recipe tab, go highlight my data and then come back. So that's a whole lot of steps. But because we named it, I can quickly type the name which was recipes. Now let's put a comma because that's how we separate our arguments. And then we're going to open up our quotation marks. And then we get to pick which one of those actions we want to use. Let's use select. So we're going to write select. We're going to say, hey, out of all of that data, select only these columns. Select columns A and B. And then we're going to close those quotations. And the last thing is to tell it how many heading rows do we have? And we have one and then close that parentheses and press enter. Okay. So it looks like column A and B came over. First of all, notice that the picture didn't come over and neither did the recipe links. 
Also, my formatting didn't come over. If I click in these cells and I try to make a change, it actually breaks my entire function. So here's the thing about query. It's basically like a picture or a snapshot. It's not for you to edit. If you do need to make edits, you need to go back to the original location and the edits you make there will appear here. It's not for sorting. It's not for filtering. It's just to look at, not to touch. It brings over text only. So this is really great for pulling something that maybe you want to print, which we're going to cover later. And in our case, it's just to give us a condensed version of our big recipe book. We can set our formatting, so let's go ahead and bold our heading, align everything up and to the left, and turn on text wrapping. You can make any additional changes that you would like to yours. So let's go back into that formula, which, where did it go? It's hiding in A1. This time, let's say, hey, grab column A. We're going to skip B because it's the pictures and the pictures don't come over. Let's say we're going to also want to grab C, which was the ingredients, D, which was the directions, and the rest. Okay, so two things. One, these columns absolutely must be capitalized. Two, you have to list them individually and not just simply C through L. Okay, so capital letters and you have to actually list them out. So get all of these in there and then press enter and check that out. Awesome, so it's my whole entire recipe book. One thing to note is the checkboxes. Remember, it only brings text over, so it brought over those cell values, yes and no, or true and false if that was the default and you had not changed it. Okay, so far, this isn't too terribly helpful, right? It's just a condensed version of my recipe book but I want to narrow it down to entrees only. So let's open that function again, hidden in A1. Let's remove those checkbox columns. And after select, let's write where and say where column F, which is our courses, equals entree. Okay, so we have a query that says, hey, go look up all this data look at all of the columns and column F, if it says entree, give me these columns only. Now, two things. One, entree is a word, so it must be inside quotations. We're already inside quotations, so we use single quotes. And two, it must be exactly as it appears in the data. So in my case, there's an accent on the E. So I must write it like that in the function or it will not work. So everything seems to look good. We closed it with parentheses and enter and check it out. How awesome. I now have a sheet that lists out all of my entrees. And what's super cool is as I continue to add to my recipe book on the main page, it will fill up this page as well. So now you can repeat this process and create individual tabs. Maybe you're someone who wants to list out the chicken dishes, or you want to list out the gluten-free dishes. Whatever it is you want to do, you can create as many tabs and use query as many times as you'd like to pull out those different sets of data. Okay, everyone, that's the basics of Google Sheets' most powerful and useful function. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.